Now, the need for clean, renewable energy is ever-increasing in this modern day and age, and that's why a growing number of people in Korea are trying to convert their land to solar farms, generating power instead of produce. Our Oh Jung-hee brings to light the benefits reaped, as well as the side effects and the challenges faced by farmers. Standing at the center of the Korean government's nuclear-free, low-carbon energy plan is a need to increase the production and supply of renewable clean energy from the current 4.8 percent to 20 percent by 2030. Solar farming, producing electricity at farms that aren't in use, is a much-discussed possible solution. Because 10 percent of Korea's farmland is left idle and installing solar panels doesn't harm the farm's ecosystem, farms are quickly becoming places of electricity generation. Additional profit from selling solar energy also helps farmers earn more. After a year of tough work, farmers make 2.5 U.S. dollars per three square meters of farmland. That minus spending on fertilizer, personal and more, leaves only 0.5 dollars. That's why the government provides them with subsidies and buys rice for them. But selling solar energy makes 50 to 60 dollars and leaves 20 dollars as net profit. Rising interest in solar farming can be seen south of the Korean mainland on Jeju Island. Last year, Jeju came up with a new project to turn some of the island's tangerine fields into solar energy production sites to increase the island's energy independence and to reduce the size of tangerine farms, which have seen their profits decline recently. Participating farmers were to close down parts of their farms where they would install solar panels. The project is on a temporary halt now, but it's seen as an innovative measure to produce energy by using surplus resources. But as solar farming means producing solar energy instead of food crops, concerns have been raised over food security. To find a more effective solution, a study is underway by one of Korea's public power corporations to enable simultaneous production of solar energy and rice. This farm has solar panels installed quite high above the ground, distance from each other, to minimize their impact on the growth of rice plants below. Farmer Chung gi manages two farms of the same size, but one with solar panels and the other without. It's been a month and a half since he planted the rice crops, and he says he can already see that installing solar panels above rice plants doesn't necessarily lead to a large drop in total yield. I was really suspicious at first because installing solar panels would make shade. I was worried. But as I now compare the rice plants below the solar panels with those not under the panels, they both grow well. In fact, those under the solar panels grow better. The farm fulfills its role in producing sufficient electricity, though the amount could differ depending on weather each day. The target amount is 350 kilowatt hours a day, and the farm produced over 500 kilowatt hours of electricity the day before we had visited. All plants have a light saturation point for rice is 70 percent. That means only 70 percent of the sunlight helps rice plants to grow, and the excess sunlight doesn't help much. So our idea is to use the remaining 30 percent to produce solar energy. Solar farming can be an attractive option for farmers, but it could cause problems if it draws in too many farmers and too much land, possibly leading to food security concerns and even conflicts between those farmers who earn more through solar farming and those who don't. So experts suggest learning from Japan's case, letting farmers continue with solar farming only if they maintain their crop yield at over 80 percent of their original yield. And regional bodies should also play a pivotal role to bring the benefits of solar farming equally to everyone. If solar farming is to work, then the residents and the regional bodies will all have to participate. Residents should invest together, and the regional governments will have to provide direct or indirect financial assistance to make sure they and the residents receive a fair amount of profits. Solar farming is only in its early stages in Korea, and the Korean government is considering allowing the building of renewable energy facilities at farming-only areas. A clear plan on that is wanted as soon as possible to maximize the benefits of solar farming and to tackle any concerns. Oh Jung-hee, Arirang News.